Hey friends, welcome to my studio. I hope you're having a great day today. I'm gonna paint another cow. I sell a lot of cows. Um, I think that's it. I sell a lot of cows. <laughs> I think that's funny. I, I don't know what else I was gonna say. So I've set up a traceable 8x8 and I'm calling this Trouble 2.0. So there's another traceable under my farm section. So when you go to the traceable landing page, you go to the, the you scroll down a little bit and there's a tab for farm. You click on that and then the first trouble is all the way down at the bottom. So I'm calling this one Trouble 2.0. I put more detail in this traceable. If you want less detail and a similar actually looking cow looking angle, you might like to do the original trouble. So I just wanted to let you know that. I'm going to paint it on a 16 by 16 inch, I think it's a piece of plywood. I heavily gessoed all sides of it. Is that plywood? I don't, it's not MDF board, I don't think. And it's got like some dirt or marks up here. I just gessoed right over. So I did two coats of clear gesso generous coats. And I'm hoping that's going to be enough. I don't actually know. I've never painted on something like this before. And then I printed out my cow traceable 200%. So it's a little small, but it's really close. So that's neat. Um, on my traceable landing page, the snowman video shows you how to do a larger traceable and there's also a link to a gal who did a great video about uh, tiling or you print it out as a poster the pdf file as a poster and then it, these sections are called tiles the eight and a half by eleven okay and then i just taped it together with scotch tape oh and then i'll put uh, chalk pastel on the back so i can turn it into a traceable so what i don't know is i think i keep bouncing around like Am I just going to paint right over the plywood? Do I want to paint a color over it? Because I didn't tint my clear gesso. I think what I'm going to do, well, let's go here. So I don't know how long ago, Hippie Crafter, which is an art company, sent me uh, 20, 20 colors in a box. They're acrylic. They're self-sealing colors. So this, maybe I need to say first, this is not sponsored by Hippie Crafter. They sponsored another video by sending me these paints for free. They didn't pay me to do the other video. The other video I show um, me swatching these paints and then there's a, um, a poppy traceable. So the first half of the video is me just kind of playing with the paints, swatching them, mixing them a little bit. And then the second half of the video is a simple poppy painting. I think it's a five by seven. There's a traceable for that. So there's, they're not sponsoring. They don't even know I'm doing this video. But I kind of like that they're self-sealing. So there's a little varnish in these paints or something. Um, yeah, self-sealing, water-based, non-toxic, indoor, outdoor use, which is true of acrylic paints, but you'd still want to seal them up. So I'm wondering that it would be good to use some self-sealing paints to um, just help seal it up a little more. Because this is going to go down to the Artist Cooperative Gallery in Omaha, Nebraska. And it's gonna go outside it's gonna in a protected area with an overhang and everything but this will still be outside so I'm wondering you know if I use self-sealing paints and then also varnish it that'll help protect it a little bit more I really don't know so I have lots of thoughts and lots of things I need to decide but I think I'm going to paint this oh maybe pretty much a beige color kind of like I did with the three cow paintings uh, Mavis in the middle I just went up recently just because I've got some odd marks I don't really like. Okay, I didn't know if I showed that too fast. So the 20 color set they sent in that nice box, um, the bottles of paint look like this. They are two ounces. And so I am gonna mix quite a bit of white with a like a blob of burnt umber and a blob of the lemon yellow. And I don't know if that's gonna be enough paint just to get some color on this board. 
I'm not going to paint the back side. Um, I will paint around the sides just like I do on a wrapped canvas. Yeah, that's kind of a... I'm kind of aiming for an unbleached titanium color. Alright guys, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, just a couple of quick thoughts. I ran out, I didn't have enough color to do the whole board, so I mixed some more color, and I think I got it super close. But if you don't, our skyline's gonna be like right down here. So it doesn't really matter if the, if, you know, cause this is gonna be some, let's see. Well, it'll be upside down, but skyline here, either cow or some green grasses here, and then cow. So it'll be totally fine. Um, I'm glad I painted a color down. Since there wasn't a pretty wood grain to show through maybe the sky or the grasses. I just, and I also had that mark, so I'm glad I covered that up with some paint. Also, it's kind of nice since I've got two coats of gesso on here. Uh, the gesso is really helpful because otherwise it would take a lot more paint. It would soak into that board. Um, so the gesso really helps with that. And then getting a coat of paint on the gesso is kind of nice because see now when I paint on it, it's a little smoother. I kind of like painting on the board. I don't get the bounce that I get with a canvas, but some people might not like that bounce. You might want to paint on, um, I think they call it cradle board when you buy it ready to paint on at an art store. I never buy it, so I really don't know what it is. If you know what that is called, or MDF board, I know some people buy that and paint on it. Um, let me know if you'd like to paint on board and what kind in the comments. I'm gonna go have dinner and let this dry. I'm just using up the paint on my palette. And then I'll be back in a bit. Okay, let's talk about what colors I'm gonna use. So cobalt blue and some Viridian, so that's a blue-green-ish. I don't know if you can see that on the video. So I put some of that on my palette. Well, actually first, this photo is by Josiah Farrow. I got it on Unsplash. I'll put the link in the video description. I, I was trying to show you earlier in a time lapse, but still kind of light. I wrote the word love up here. It's <laughs> some chalk pastel. I used um, a new pastel or um, what's the brand? It's a new pastel. Shoot, I can't think of the brand right now. It's a harder pastel, so there's not as much dust, so that worked pretty well. Here's what I'm thinking for my palette. So there's almost half and half cobalt blue and viridian green, and it was just way too bright. Well, and too green, so I put some more blue in it. And then I put some yellow ochre in it, which muted it down. You could use orange. Um, orange is a complement of blue. You could use a little bits of black or gray or something. And then I pulled out a bunch of that for another puddle and added a little mo more ochre to it and white to it. And I think that's going to be a pretty good color. I'm also thinking it's going to look more blue when I get it painted on. And then I put out some Liquitex white because I don't have my bottle of Hippie Crafter white isn't that big. And I'm going to go through it. I go through a lot of white. So I put out some Liquitex white. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna paint this like I did the Three Cows painting and the Single Pumpkin, which you might like. Um, that one just went up too. I'm gonna paint around. Instead of painting the whole background, which I've done in quite a few videos, I'm gonna paint around the cow.
so I mixed way more blue than I needed. Um, and that's okay. I'm, I'll save the palette. I might even be able to use it for another painting. But I grabbed some of the straight up um, Viridian and Cobalt blue mixture I had. Put some over here. Added some um, yellow ochre to it. <laughs> Just realized I probably wasn't um, on camera. And then that made a really nice muted green. I really like that. And then I um, grabbed some more and left it a little bluer. Or, or sorry, I grabbed some more of the straight up Viridian and Cobalt, added a little less yellow ochre and some uh, raw umber. Yeah, raw umber. So I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna paint, I think pretty much horizontal strokes and keep the grass in the background. This photo was taken either before the sun came up or after the sun went down. So there's really soft shadows and stuff. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to put the sun on this side of the cow's face and clean it up. That looks like mud or something on there. Uh, when you, I zoom in on my iPad, it looks like wet fur or hair. <laughs> cows have hair. <laughs> so I'm going to work on the grass and probably call it good for tonight. A couple things happened so instead of going horizontal I ended up just kind of stamping almost um, and then when I got down here I went vertical here I think I need to move this and then I end I just had a thought so I ended up adding hints of black-eyed Susans I don't know if you can see that just having straighten it out so I think we'll leave that for now and see how it looks when we get the rest of the painting done Sorry, I decided maybe you couldn't see them. They're just sort of mushy uh, yellow ochre and some are yellow ochre and white blobs. And then I put in some uh, raw umber dots. I like it. You really, I don't think you can see it once I put the wood panel down. Um, this paint is drying faster, a little bit faster than liquid text. I don't know if it's the board. I'm starting to think that I made those comments in the hippie crafter video where I did the paint swatches and then the poppies with the traceable. And I also painted a jellyfish with the hippie crafter paints. I really like them. Um, and every paint's a little different. So it's hard to know. They're really buttery, um, excellent pigmentation in them. That I really love that about them. Okay guys, I'm gonna quit for tonight and I'll be back later. Let's talk about the colors I'm using. So Hippie Crafter has a violet that's really dark and then it's really pretty. That might have a little black in it so it might be a little more muted. Let's, um, let's grab a little white. I kind of showed you in the time lapse but I don't know. Excuse me if that was helpful. Oh it is quite, quite muted. It's pretty. Is, is that on camera? It's really pretty. And I'm liking it for some of the uh, dark areas, black areas of the cow. I also put out a little bit of the cobalt blue that I used in the sky. Um, they, I think they have, they have other blues, but I'm not trying to use, 
I don't want to use every color they sent me. It helps to unify the painting if you use some of the same colors. And I think I'll add some of it to the black as I get. This actually looks pretty good on this side. And I'm using this brush because it splits. Um, it ha like leaves little hairs. It's kind of fat on the end a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and it's giving me some nice, nice brush strokes. So I just wanted to pop in. Oops, I got a little. <laughs> I almost had a little water on my palette there. Just wanted to pop in and let you know what I'm thinking. friends I thought I'd pop in with a couple comments so I was thinking of starting a new palette and maybe I should have but then I ended up putting out some of the colors I'm gonna need in the ears um, on the nose so I have raw umber which almost looks black right there's raw umber I'm looking to see what these colors are I'm not as familiar uh, rose so a pink kind of a magenta Oh, I don't have the yellow ochre out. I have the champagne. That kind of pinky, fleshy color champagne. And then I believe that's a cobalt blue that I had on there from earlier. Yep. Oh, the violet's real pretty. Mars black, titanium white. So I'm going to work... Oh, and then sometimes... So in theory you work big areas or big shapes, like this is a big shape. To small shapes so you know I'd work on the ears work on the whole side of the face and then come back in and put the details but sometimes I like to add the details and I also like to um oopsie I just have some stuff protecting the easel a little bit I have to touch that up um, sometimes I like to put in some of the details so I don't lose my roadmap and the eyes are gonna look funny but there's one eye because I don't have the pink or any of the hair around it there's the other eye hopefully that's focusing so I'm thinking light to the left on the left side so light coming from here I may have like a little light on this ear even though it's not the way it is in the reference photo um, so I think I'm gonna have warmer Shades and shadows over here, some cooler on the right side, and I've got it on the top too, maybe some, I don't know if I'll change these cooler shadows or leave them. Anyway, that's just what I'm thinking, and I've got you almost over my shoulder at a bit of an angle so my head doesn't get in the way. Um, let me know if this, this is okay for watching the video. Okay guys, back in a bit.
Hey, I thought I'd pop in because I pretty much have one layer of paint down on the whole. It's not quite, it's a little smaller than 16 by 16 inch um, wood panel. I think it's plywood. Okay, so I think the sky is done. It's looking good. I just have hints of clouds in there. Yeah, I think that looks good, but I definitely, so the eyes, that eye might be done. Well, it's not done because I need to deal with the fur or the hair. <laughs> I think it's hair around the eye. But I've just kind of been painting shapes, little shapes and value changes. I don't know if I like that eye, but I need to also clean it up, clean up the hair around it. Um, the ears are looking pretty good, but I'm going to put a little more detail, a little more brush strokes in them. Here, if you want to see the nose. I haven't used any really, now well, there's a little white on that eye, but I really haven't used any white yet, which will be fun. And I pretty much painted out my flower. So you can see little hints of my flower. Like here, there's the center of the flower. There's a little stem and there's a little stem, but that's okay. I mean, how right? I'll paint the flower. Oh, I don't know if I'll paint it next or not. Cause I think I'm gonna wanna I'm gonna wanna mess with what's behind the stem here more and definitely here. I really like it. So one thing I did, oh, one thing I did, so I'm using this Filbert, I think that says a number nine. They're, it said Zoo Zing on them. I got them on Amazon and I don't leave them in the water, but boy, it doesn't take long for a new brush before it's, the wood starts to expand and then pop the paint off. So that's one thing I don't like about these, but they were really inexpensive. So that's definitely a plus side and, and I like them. I mean, they, they work well, but one thing I did is I ended up adding a little ochre yellow onto my palette and then put in some warmer yellowish beiges on this beigeish <laughs> on this side of the cow's face. And over here is cooler browner grays. And so then when I add the white, I don't know, I won't add any, well, I might add a little, I've got a little white here and here. I might add a little bit of white, but when I add the white, it should uh, bring more contrast and more light. What is that? More values and make this look like the darker side of the cow's face. I have some fun pinks and oranges and oh yeah, the nose definitely needs a little more love, but it's getting there. I thought you'd like to see it. Oh, and I don't know if I'll change the, I've got some little black eyed Susans in the background. I think I already showed that earlier in case you want to see them. I did add a little straight up yellow just to a couple of them to make them stand out a little bit more. But once I get this flower on and some of the values on, then I'll decide. I could put some larger ones in too. We'll just see how this looks. And then, and then as I said, decide. Okay guys, I just wanted to pop in because when I look at it um, through my phone, it looks, it looks good. It looks like, like it's working. I've already got some lighter highlights here. Um, I think the colors are really nice. Okay guys, um, I'm gonna paint some more and I'll be back in a bit.
Hey, I've been playing mostly with white and turning on the lights in the, the painting, which I think is one of the most fun things to do. Um, refine the eyes, the, I don't know, crud around the eyes. <laughs> and I'm not always following the reference photo exactly. I've got it on my iPad too. Um, I haven't refined the pinks and the nose and the chin here. I definitely want this, I think, darker. And I added, I, I pulled out a little more color here, but I like it, I think. And then I added some straight up pink back into the ears. I kind of keep playing with values and colors. It's a portrait, so you don't have to worry too much. Um, but this nose is going to be really strong, and I want to make sure that the ears kind of kind of um, are strong too and then I've got to get the flower in but I'm, I'm waiting till I get more of the the face done I think the flower will be last and then I've put oops I thought you might want a close-up look so I have put in some places like four coats of white and I even kind of I had more brush strokes here and I even kind of just put on a thicker larger layer of white just to kind of brighten up the side of the face in case you want to see the other eye so really there wouldn't be that white a white on the eyelash uh, parts of the eye but I like that it calls more attention to the eyes and then what's really fun is so like one coat of white to make these hairs whiskers and then over, I don't know if I put any, oh, you don't really see them. Well, here I've got kind of maybe two in some areas. You know, kind of put, ex I know I put extra white on that to make that pop out. Because a lot of times one, a lot of times it needs two to make it brighter, more white. Is there anything else? Oh, and then like in, on this ear, I took a little skinny fine brush and actually painted with straight up black. You know, negative they call it negative painting. Instead of painting more white hairs, I actually came back and put in some black. That might be a decent tip. Okay, I'm gonna stop for tonight and work on the nose. And this could be done pretty soon. The video smooths it out so it looks really good, which is why I keep kind of zooming in. But the brush strokes are fun. And then like just two little white here is really kind of fun to make that sort of pop and entertain a little bit. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, um, I mean, I'm not done painting yet, but if you have any questions that come to mind, put them in the comments and I'll answer them and I'll be back tomorrow. friends I'm done um I really I really like this one cows make me happy I ended up uh, making this flower the center bigger and the petals bigger and then I also got a little motion to them because what I want you to do is kind of like nose flower eye you know as the main main things you you walk around through 
in the painting and then I added a little bit more bright yellow I think that's the second or third time I've added more bright yellow to the hints of black-eyed Susans off in the field I'm calling this trouble 2.0 because you know this cow's in trouble for stealing a flower <laughs> and then this might be a little harder there is a traceable oh and I have this out because I grabbed my sky palette that I had for the sky and the grasses back out for the black-eyed Susan flower. Oh, and then I also added some cad yellow to help brighten it up. That's a yellow ochre. So I, I used just a little bit of cad yellow here and there just so that comes forward and, and uh, draws attention. Um, I cannot remember where this reference photo is, is from, but I will link it in the video description. I think it's Unsplash. I think it's in my collection on Unsplash that I've curated. So this is kind of hard for beginners, I think, because there isn't a lot of values. And I think I might have talked about this already, but just in case I didn't, there's not a lot of value changes in the face. And the face is dirty, and I wanted to kind of clean up the face. Um, you might like the, I'm pretty sure I did mention this. I've got Trouble, which is a really old, short, three or four minute video that I ended up doing a traceable for later because people were asking for it. But here, I'll show you a little closer. So I even added a little bit darker value here to help the face look a little, you know, more, have a little bit more shape. I've got bluish cool values here. And then I over exaggerated and had it warm up here. But I think you can see how that just helps. Really, there's a good example of helping the shape turn sort of the corner between in the sun or catching some sun and not. Oh, here, maybe you want to see the flower up close. Oh. <laughs> Having a little bit of aiming trouble. I exaggerated a couple of shadows in the, in the flower just to give it a little more interest. Help it stand out from that medium to light green background. Oh, and here's the flowers off in the distance. I added a few brighter brush strokes. But some of them are pretty messy. They don't look like much. I hope that gives you a good view because I'm way off to the side of my phone leaning over. There's the other ear and eye. And sometimes it's just fun to have a blob of color, a blob of color. Sometimes I do it too much and I have to paint them out. Let's see me. Oh, the nose. So I exaggerated the nose a little bit too. It's actually darker down here. And I didn't put in every spot, but it's kind of nice to have one that's painted over a little bit. And then one that's more solid. I think that really helps if you're looking for a little more realism, a little more interest. And then this is actually quite dark on the upper lip, but I exaggerated it and made it lighter. Oh, and then the, one of the reasons why I made this flower bigger is because we've got quite a long stem. But black-eyed Susans do have pretty long stems. But it's almost like we should have some roots because I've got such a long stem. <laughs> oh, and the whiskers. So maybe one coat of grayish paint and then these are a little lighter. You don't have to do all that. That's just some of the things that I did do. I'm gonna see the other eye. There's even some purple. Just playing with color. Oh, I think I ended up lighten lightening this up just a little bit, and then I lightened up the shoulder just a little bit. So I hope that gives you a decent look. I think it's really fun. Oh, it's on a wood panel that the gallery gave me. Oh, I've signed the back. I'm going to, um, I just so, just, just so all the sides and edges of this and I painted the edges I'm gonna put a gel gloss isolation layer on it because I think it helps make the colors look a little deeper and richer and then I'm gonna put a satin varnish all over everything so I hope that's smart I don't know um, because it could be out in the weather it's gonna be out in a covered area in front of the gallery but it's technically outside and it could get rain and snow on it if it blows really hard so I don't know if sealing it all up is a good idea or if I should have just sealed this side. If you guys know, let me know. Because I've never painted on a piece of plywood before. If I should have just sealed the front of it and let the back of it breathe. 
uh, please let me know in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. I hope you like this one. Um, you could paint it much more simple. It This is uh, 16 by 16. You could paint it 8 by 8 real easily and then leave out some of the detail. Um, it was really fun. I think it's really cute. I really like the expression on this cow. Thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. Oh, if you want, hang out with uh, Emily, my daughter, and I during the lives. We do it every Wednesday at noon. Uh, we may skip a couple you know, like the week of Christmas or something, but we're there. We just work on whatever I've got going on in my studio, or sometimes I do a fun little project with traceables. Um, if you want, just hang out with us. We really enjoy getting to know you. Okay, guys, thank you for all your support. Great big happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.